And Jonathan Fred. He was so sweet. He was such a sweet man. And I... <laughs> You know, looking back on, on Jonathan, when I first started working with him, I was this cocky, cocky actor, and I thought, eh, the guy doesn't know his lines, you know. <laughs> looking back on his work, he was phenomenal. I mean, when he overcame the lines and he got into those parts, he was brilliant. He was a great actor. And he was a technician. He could do it all. He was Shakespearean. He was classical. So, um... Yeah, I, I, I think he, he was a phenomenal talent. Good for Jonathan. Yeah. Ah, Don Briscoe. If he had continued, I think he would have been a major star. He had, he had the vulnerability, he had a great look, he had a sweetness, he had a risability. Um, I don't know what happened to him. He's apparently he's he's down there on the farm in Kentucky or Tennessee or something. But um it's sort of a, a lesson. Don't don't mess with your talent. Don't mess with when you've got everything going for you. You don't have to help it along. You don't have to medicate it. You don't have to do anything. You know, when you've got a gift, that's it's God's way of saying, Wow, just do, live your life. Don't mess with it. And so many of us messed with it, and I think Don did, and um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a shame. Yeah. Grace in the Hall. <laughs> all, I, all I remember is Night of the Iguana, Oscar nomination. I am acting with her. I am on the same screen with her. I'm doing scenes with Grace in the Hall. And um, she was human. She was just like the rest of us. She was an actor, struggling, doing it, forgetting lines. Coming up to it, Grayson Hall was amazing. I'm, I'm still hurt, though, Grayson, wherever you are. You, you said that your, your eyes are you're too narrow. They're sort of, they're sort of in the, they're not wide enough for the screen. <laughs> I'm sitting there in the makeup chair, and she's telling me this, and I have never forgotten that. Isn't that weird? You know, you remember these little things. <laughs> I think another thing, Grayson, Grayson, why is it that? I think you said uh, I was overacting a little bit too British when we did the first Dark Shadows movie. She said, just take it down a little bit. You're being a little bit too British, too. Yeah, uh, I, yeah you're right. You're right, Grayson. OK, yeah. <laughs> but what a talent. What a woman. Fair David. We, sh we were in the same apartment building. I would see Thayer David a lot after, after Dark Shadows. We were, lived on 57th Street. And I remember um, seeing him a lot. And then I think we all moved to Hollywood. And he came out and started doing Nero Wolf. Um, when I was doing the show with him, I was struck by this incredible actor who was so humble, who would say to Lilo Swift, was that, was that okay? I mean, should I do more? Should I do less? I mean, am, am I terrible today? The guy had no ego. And he was incredible. I mean, this guy was an actor. He was a wonderful actor. I did uh, Savages with him afterwards, with uh, Salome Jens and Sam Waterston. And there David was Otto Mruder, or something like that. And uh, he got even better. He kept getting better and better and better. So this guy is 50, 55, something like that, and he's still getting better. And that's, that's a, a great thing to know, that you can keep getting better as an actor. So he's, he's my inspiration. I want to keep getting better. And I think, you know, when you hit a certain age and, you know, you're not getting the sexy roles anymore, the young rebels anymore, the this or the that, but you're, you know, I mean, God, I'm, I just did Claudius and Hamlet. I just did something that he would have been great as. He would have been phenomenal as Claudius and Hamlet. I just did uh, George and Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf, another thing he would have been great in. But, you know, the, it's, he's my inspiration. You know, you get better and better in spite of it. And he had diabetes. I mean, it was, it was rough. Drinking Cokes. Coke after Coke after Coke. Whoa, there. Yeah. Johnny Carlin. Now, he's a powerhouse, and he keeps getting better. He's got to get back to acting. 
Um, he was really good on the show. He's really good on Cagney and Lacey. But every time I talk with him or mess around with him, you can tell about an actor that he would be incredible right now. So Johnny Carlin should, I think, get back to acting. Like I am, you know? Don't get out of it, get back into it. Um, I think he was one of the, the geniuses of the show. I mean, I mean, real genius, genius. I love his work, he's phenomenally talented. What a bunch, what a bunch of people. Huh. Kate Jackson was beautiful and single. Right out of the American Academy of Dramatic Arts and you'd watch her work and she was so simple. And we, all the rest of us were doing things, you know, we were acting and she would just do it. And it would be simple and honest and truthful. And uh, I remember Laura Parkin and I were watching her and Laura said, she's really good. And I said, yeah, she's honest. She's not lying. You know, a lot of us would get out there and <laughs> do this really overblown phony stuff, you know, for an effect. But Kate was, and guess who became the big star? Kate. Do you know, I think Kate Jackson was supposed to do the Meryl Street part in Kramer versus Kramer, but they wouldn't let her out of her Charlie's Angels. So interesting, you know, if you think about what would have happened if Kate Jackson had done the Meryl Streep part. I think Streep got an Oscar. Yeah. Funny about, about the way things go. I remember Louis Edmonds. Um, my main memory is trying to cry over his bedside. He was dying and I was playing his son. And I kept thinking that my agent was going to be watching that day, Bob Lamont. And I, I kept trying to push out these tears. And instead of acting, I thought, well, just look at Louis and look at his face and see what happens. So we made eye contact. And because the guy just, I don't know, it was beautiful. He moved me. It was great. And I miss him. Great actor.